What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again this week. With the release of SQL Server 2019 imminent, or well at least when most people think are going to be its release, there's no official date yet, I thought it'd be fun to go over all the features that are coming out in 2019 and kind of point out the ones that I'm most and least excited for. I thought it'd be fun to kind of do it in a quadrant format, so picking two axes and just kind of ranking a variety of features along them. And so the two categories I decided to rate the new features on are excitement and priority. Excitement is pretty easy to define, right? It's just me as a developer, how excited am I to use this feature? These typically lean towards the kind of performance oriented features or just features that make my development life a lot easier. And it's not to say that the features that rank low on the excitement scale are not good features. They're just, you know, maybe they're important. They're just not high excitement for me. And so the second category I'm ranking these features on is priority, right? So on day one, then I start using SQL Server 2019 in like a production environment. There are gonna be some features that I'm gonna wanna use first right on day one, um, while other features are gonna kind of take more time for me to get used to either because they're also low excitement or they're a little bit more involved in terms of their setup and getting things working like they should. Once again, these high priority features versus low priority features are just kind of subjective in my mind. And even though they kind of correlate with the amount of effort required to get them you know, working, uh, it doesn't mean that any of them are bad features. They're just how I personally prioritize their usage. And finally, before we dive in, uh, these rankings are purely based on Microsoft's descriptions of these features. I haven't uh, played in depth with any of them, so even though I may rank them one way today, who knows how you know I'll decide to rank them after using them for six months. I'm guessing that the position of some of these features on this quadrant will likely change. All right, let's look at this quadrant, starting with the top right corner. These are all the features that are kind of high excitement and high priority in my mind because I think they're gonna really help with performance or debugging different types of issues. So I think the thing I'm most excited for is scalar function inlining, uh, even though today, I don't think I use any scalar functions in production, right? Because of usually the performance of them isn't worth putting them in. But now if I'll be able to create scalar functions and the optimizer is just gonna be able to integrate them and perform set-based operations with them, um, I may start using them because I will be able to reuse my code and that's something that I really wanna do. Also in that top right quadrant, right, is accelerated database recovery. I'm just excited for that because I've definitely uh, spent a lot of time waiting for rollbacks to happen. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly uh, that accelerated database recovery occurs um, when I decide to cancel a transaction. Sys.dm exec query plan stats uh, is something that will also be interesting, right? That's where the actual runtime statistics from uh, your last executed query plan will show up along with the estimated plan, right? That's in cache. So uh, kind of useful for debugging, hopefully. I mean, obviously I've gone years and years and years without it, uh, but hopefully, right, the information provided by that will add some additional value. I'm also looking forward to the improvements in memory grant feedback once again it's just one of those things that if the you know without really changing anything about my queries if they will execute more efficiently uh, then why not right that's a great thing and so finally, the last thing in this quadrant is table variable deferred compilation. Uh, basically, uh, instead of just having a value of 100 estimated rows for many table variables, SQL Server will supposedly right, do a much better job of estimating those values. This is also one of those features where the promise of performance improvement for free basically is awesome. Uh, but since I don't really use table variables that much today, I may have to rethink of the occasions where I would use a table variable instead of something like a temp table and if it's worth it or not. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it really performs in you know, production workloads and if it's worth changing. All right, moving in a counterclockwise direction, I wanna talk about the top left quadrant, which is high excitement, but lower priority features. And the thing I'm most excited for in that quadrant are big data clusters. And I don't know if big data clusters is technically the flagship feature of SQL Server 2019, but it's definitely one of the features that I've heard the most about and for good reason, right? It's really cool. Uh, I definitely look forward to being able to, you know, kind of scale out the computational power uh, for certain querying scenarios, 
but it's in this top left quadrant because uh, it's not as simple, right, to set up. It's not something out of the box like scalar UDF inlining, um, which will just work, right? There's a little bit more configuration that'll have to happen with big data clusters uh, to get everything set up correctly, um, as well as uh, no licensing information has been released yet as of the time that I'm recording this video. So that'll also play an interesting part to see how you know likely it is that I'll be using it. So Polybase is another big one, right? Polybase has been around forever, but it's part of 2019. It's this big push that it can connect to more types of data sources and, and, and you know, perform more efficiently. Um, I've used Polybase in the past and I do like it. So um, any kind of improvement in that direction is definitely appreciated. And finally, in this top left quadrant, right, is SQL Server running on Windows and Linux and in containers, um, right? This is something that is just I think a great feature because now you're really eliminating you know, the concern for where SQL Server is running. All right, let's jump caddy corner to the low excitement but high priority quadrant. And so the highest excitement item in that quadrant is batch mode for uh, row store indexes. Right, so for column store indexes, I've had some experience with batch mode executions and being able to kind of filter out data at the very earliest possible time. Um, and it's a cool feature. Uh, now with 2019, you'll be able to do that on row store indexes as well. Um, I'm definitely curious to see how the performance on that works and uh, you know how often SQL Server will decide to use batch mode um, versus kind of the regular execution mode. We'll just have to wait and see. Encrypted column indexes, this is definitely something that's cool, right? Previously, if you encrypt the value of a column, you can't really index it because if you, you write a, you know, a where clause or something on a, on a value um, that's encrypted, there's no real way to search it. Um, now with kind of secure enclaves in SQL Server 2019, uh, it adds the ability to index your encrypted data and actually be able to uh, search and sort on it, right, in its decrypted state. So uh, that'll be cool, uh, but but it'll require a, you know, a good amount of rewriting and queries that uh, I'm using in that today. So that's why it's kind of a, you know, lower on the excitement scale there. All right, the optimize for sequential keys option uh, sounds pretty cool. I don't have too many uh, workloads where uh, contention on my inserts, right, is occurring because I'm, I'm inserting so much data so quickly that uh, the, the, the page that SQL Server is inserting data to is kind of locked and, and throughput decreases. Um, but for the few kind of scenarios where where I, I do encounter those problems occasionally. I'll be curious to see right, how this fixes it um, and how it'll work. And finally, the improvement to truncation error messages is much appreciated, right? Now, instead of just getting the generic uh, data has been truncated with absolutely no hint as to which row or which column of data uh, the value was actually truncated in, uh, now there's some useful information so you can actually find it. Uh, it's just low on the excitement scale because honestly, this is a feature that I feel like should have been in here a decade ago. Um, so now it's like, yay, we have it, it's cool, I'm glad it's in there, but uh, at this point, I'm just, there's way more exciting things going on. All right, and in this final quadrant, right, it's the low excitement, low priority quadrant. Um, and this is just from my viewpoint, right? Uh, the first thing in here are the uh, graph functions. I don't do anything with graph databases today. Maybe I will in the future. Um, but as of right now, it's not anything I really deal with, so it's hard to be excited about it. Um, and same thing with the Java uh, SDKs that are available in SQL Server. Uh, I don't do any Java, so this is likely something I will never use. Um, I'm sure it's great for some people out there uh, who will be able to use it, but it's just not for me. So that's it, hope you enjoyed my rankings. I'd be curious to hear if you agree with them or if you think I got the quadrants for certain features wrong um, or if I missed a feature that you really care about altogether, uh, be sure to comment, I, I, I'd love to read about that. And that's it for this week. Thank you for watching again. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time, thanks.